When did processed food, fast food, and sugar become the norm? And at what point did the word diet become the word we use to describe people that eat whole nutritious food and choose not to eat the processed food? And has adopting this mindset made us healthier or less healthy? Has it prolonged our life or limited our life? And think about this, has it given us freedom from food or trapped us in a food addiction? We're diving deep into the fascinating evolution of our eating habits from when fast food and sugar became the norm to how adopting a whole nutritious diet can lead to a healthier and longer life. Welcome to episode 20, Bite by Bite, Unpacking Food Evolution and Healthier Choices. At the Health Revolution Podcast, we firmly believe that mental and physical health are linked, and it's impossible to achieve optimal health without addressing both. You'll learn how to optimize your nutrition, manage stress, and cultivate a positive mindset. We'll share personal stories and practical advice along the way to help you live a healthier and happier life, one that's full of energy, vitality, and joy. So whether you're struggling with chronic health issues, feeling stressed, or simply looking to optimize your overall well-being, we're here to help. Let's embark on this journey towards optimal health and wellness together. Hey, John, thanks for joining us today. Hey, how's it going? (laughs) I'm happy you chose this as a topic today. Oh, yeah. Bite by bite. Yeah. You see what I did there? It's like bit by bit, bit by bite by bite. Really cute. Yeah. Really cute. It just seems like this is like an argument in our house all the time with our kids. So I don't know about argument. Okay. A a discussion. Yes. It's definitely discussion. Maybe debate sometimes. Debate. Heated discussions. (laughs) We have one child in particular that does not like healthy food choices. Mm -mm. And And we have one that doesn't like food choices at all. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then we have two, our bookends, our oldest and our youngest that love healthy food. Mm -hmm. Like they, they'll try any food. They love healthy food choices like vegetables Mm -hmm. and they, they ask for more healthy food. So we run the gamut. And so I don't want you to think like, Oh, we're these perfect parents that have these kids that have healthy food choices all the time. No, it's definitely been a struggle for us. In fact, our oldest daughter, when she was two and three years old, remember? What oh, she, yeah. All I mean, she would eat was Sweet Lucy's Mac and Cheese. There's this restaurant down the road, Sweet Lucy's. Oh, and she barbecue. Yeah. She can say her L's, so she called it Sweet Lucy's. Yeah. And she would only, like, she went through this stage where she would only eat Sweet Lucy's Mac and Cheese. Yeah, like, we, we got to the point to where we would try to fool her, and we would go and... <laughs> Get, keep the Sweet Lucy's mac and cheese styrofoam and try to fill it in with our own creations. Yeah. And it's like, and she was no, too. And she's this like, This is not Sweet Lucy's. This is not Sweet Lucy's mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, sure it is. It's out of the container. She's since graduated to better days now. Yeah, so. she's our healthiest eater by far. So she's doing great now. She's 17. Juliet. Juliet yeah. teaches me. You know, I, you were out of town one time and I had to cook dinner for Ella and Julia. Not had you, I got to. And, <laughs> it was your privilege. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know how Ella eats. And Ella is our one that, like, doesn't eat like, or maybe just eats cereal. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. She's a cereal gal. Yeah. So, but, you know, Juliet, like, I, I fixed her this meal and I laid it down in front of them, something that Ella would eat. And she looks back at me and says, Dad, can we have some vegetables? Oh, my gosh. That's. <laughs> My eight-year-old. I, that's so cute. She loves vegetables. She yeah. she is a great eater. She does really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really enjoyable, I think, for us to feed the ones that enjoy eating healthy. Yeah. And it's very irritating for us to feed the other ones that continually make unwise food choices. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and even um, Grant, our son, he's 14 now, but when he was seven and eight years old, we did this program with him to work on his ADHD. And as part of the program, well, the elimination diet thing, we did elimination oh diet. Gosh, yeah. We so had hard. no sugar, no gluten, no dairy, no dyes, no, yeah, no food colorings and really no processed food because if you're limiting no sugar and no gluten and all that stuff and mm-hmm. no dyes, like that pretty much forces you to eat a whole foods diet. And that was the first time. I mean, I thought we always kind of ate pretty healthy. Not after that. But when we did that, it opened my eyes to like, 
wow. I mean, how much stuff I got rid of and that we didn't buy for a year and a half or two years. We just didn't buy those things. And we adapted this more like whole diet lifestyle. And I was making like all of our food. And so I remember at the time, I mean, because the little girls were young during this time and I was busy with hands full with them and a son with ADHD. Yeah. And then the older daughter who, you know, had her own struggles. Shoot, and then you were struggling at this time, if oh, yeah. we remember, with the uh, high stress, high demands, the drug addiction and all of those things. Yep. And so it was all on me to make all the food, all the snacks, mm-hmm. all the things. And yeah. at least that's how I felt at the time. It was very well, challenging. Well, and I didn't want to eat them either. And so I, <laughs> yeah. I did a significant amount of sneaking around. Shame eating. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Don't let Allison see what I'm eating because I want to be on board with her program. Oh, I so. remember I find like McDonald's receipts or like fast mm-hmm. food wrappers. And I'm like, hey, what's going on here? And you're like, oh, I just had a bite and I threw the rest away. And and <laughs> most times that was true. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just amazing when you go on this, this, uh, this healthy eating, uh, you know, crusade, you might say, I guess this journey. Yeah. Um, what type of emotions that unlocks? Oh because, my gosh. I mean, food or, you know, sugar is like the, the heroin of, it is. of food products. So it's like, when did that start? When did, when did it become normal yeah, to so- eat like so much sugar? I know sugar and like fast food and processed food. Um, So I was reading about this and it really started in like the mid 20th century. So long before we were born, but like that post world war two era, I mean, it was the rise, what they call the rise of the convenience culture. And you can see that where we started getting all these fast food chains like McDonald's and um, those things played a, significant role in normalizing the idea of fast food and sugar. Well, and it wasn't just McDonald's, right? I mean, they no. had diners all over the U S yes, but I mean, we're talking like McDonald's helped normalize the idea of sit in your car or drive through with your car and get something quick, highly processed because they were turning and burning. Right. I mean, the ice cream doesn't even have ice cream in it. It doesn't have dairy yeah. products. It's like these artificial ingredients being served to the masses, mm-hmm. mass quantities, uh, mass uh, and quick, like a quick turnover to mm-hmm. like quickly and efficiently as possible. And that didn't always equate to healthy. No, no, it never so does. Stripped all the nutrients out of it. In fact, one of our friends, Randy Grant, oh, who yeah. we've mentioned before on the podcast, um, Big he, Macs, right? he has a Big Mac from 1999. Yeah. And he's never refrigerated it or anything is still in the box Mm -hmm. and he'll show it to you. And it looks just the same. I mean, we're talking even the bread. Like beautifully preserved. Yeah. The bread is not even moldy. Mm -hmm. It's like preserved just how it was when he bought it, which is insane. The veg has gone away. Yes. But but the crap has remained. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So terrible. Okay. So. And as for sugar, I mean, we just see that it started creeping in everywhere and with the rise of what's, what's popular in America, more, maybe more popular than sugar is high fructose corn syrup. Which is sugar. Just like more intensified, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's like one of the most processed things that you can get. Uh, You know, agave is the same way. You know, we don't right. even, we, we think about, oh yeah, we're getting or, a, organic agave sweetener. Agave, I used to add that into everything. I'm like, oh, I'm getting rid of sugar. I'm just going to add agave sweetener. Oh my gosh. That's so, crud. so when we look at sweeteners, because we do use some sweeteners um, in our diet, it's not a lot, but no. some, and we look at how, what effects it has on our blood glucose levels and our mm-hmm. blood sugar. And is it going to make it spike or does it help it stay consistent? So that's really what we're looking for mm-hmm. with sweeteners. I mean, because you could even get like diet soda and that doesn't mean it's going to be healthy for oh, you, right? diet soda is like one of the worst things you, and hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a diet soda fan, you but you know, that's, that's your- the worst <laughs> toxin that I put into my body. Now. Yeah. And you, you were up to at one point, what, like a gallon, oh, a of gallon of soda a day, Mountain Dew and Mountain Dew. Was and it, then, di- it was always diet, then though, diet right? Mountain Dew, yeah. which is even worse than drinking regular Mountain Dew. 
yeah, tell us why that is. Well, you know, I mean, we're looking at diet products in general. One of the most common sweeteners that they use in diet products, especially sodas, aside, you know, there's been some that have used Splenda, but most use aspartame. Yeah. So aspartame is a really interesting molecule in that it is very sweet, but aspartame is also a brain stimulant. Okay. And so you're essentially drinking a a stimulant that's going to work very similar to an anti uh, a, an anti anxiety pill. It, oh. it, it actually uh, it, it affects your brain. Well, so is that a good thing if it's anti anxiety? It's really not. I mean, you know what what they have found is that in in stimulating the brain, you know, especially for diet sodas, they give you the aspartame, which is going to stimulate the brain, but then they also pair that with caffeine, which is going to rev the body up. So that sounds like a highly addictive combination. Absolutely. <laughs> what, what they found, the research is, is you drink these things and you want to eat more food. Oh, How fun. and probably not like a salad. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it, it, like it causes sugar craving. The, yeah, yeah. Like the junk food. Uh -huh. That's really interesting. So that pairs hand in hand with like the fast food Absolutely. culture. Right? And you know, what's interesting is try to go off of a diet soda and that's worse than getting off, uh, you know, quite a few things for a couple of weeks. I mean, you're, you're looking at headaches and, and, uh, and, and flu like symptoms. You can get all of that by coming off of your diet soda. Yeah. I mean, people well, love did. their diet sodas and you it's not the caffeine. It's actually the aspartame that our body, oh. become, our, our brain loves so much. It's right. The aspartame. You need it like a drug. Yeah. 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 So it's so another you've drug. You've gone from, off soda a, a couple of times oh, yeah, in yeah. Life, but it's hard I'm no quitter. because you have well you have quit <laughs> recently but it's hard for you because you do have those like migraine like intense emotional and physical pain mm -hmm. after giving up your diet drinks in fact you have the tumbler right now if oh, anyone's yeah. watching this on yeah, if I take a drink right now I got this <laughs> nice red bull tumbler uh my cousin <laughs> I can put this in the show notes a link to her but she makes these tumblers that look like a gigantic Red Bull can. <laughs> so yeah, John, it's, it's great. John loves drinking out of this and people are like, whoa, dude, you, you have a problem. Yeah. It's, like, it's just oh, water. It's just water. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, our teenage daughter takes it to school as well. And the teachers are like, oh, you, you can't have that in here. And she's like, it's just water. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. It's, it's a good, it's a good prank. But um, seeing you drink water is like, mind boggling to me mm -hmm. because we've been married 23, almost 24 years yeah. and you've been a soda drinker. Hardcore, oh, I'm a, I'm a hardcore drinker. soda drinker. Yeah. I would rather drink that. And, and what I tell myself is, you know, you're getting your water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're I remember your you're water. like, I put a ton of ice in it, so I'm good. Yeah, absolutely. Water. But you're still getting that aspartame. So let's yeah. not fool ourselves, but I love water. You know, water nowadays, I, I, I love it so much because it actually tastes a little sweet to me. It does. And so talking about getting through sugar. So we talked about like when it started really developing and I want to talk about that a little bit more, but yeah. like we don't eat sugar anymore. Not and that's, lot. that's maybe people that are listening incomprehensible because sugar it's is in everything, in everything. Yeah. even ketchup. When we were meeting with Randy Grant, you remember he said ketchup, um, 20 years ago is not the ketchup we're eating now. And he showed us how much more sugar they're adding to ketchup, mm -hmm. which we think, oh, it's simple enough. It's tomatoes and whatever else he put in it. They've added slow. It's like triple the amount of sugar. Yeah. They're slowly adding more and more sugar to our foods because we want it. More. We're addicted to it. We're addicted to it. And things that are less sugary become unappetizing. And so we want more sugar so that we can eat more. And the thing is like, I love tea. Like I love drinking herbal tea. Mm -hmm. And I have like, if people are eating sugar or drinking sugar, they don't like herbal tea. Well, let's they go back to addiction. All right. And we, we talked about that word before we've defined that in some prior podcasts. Yeah. You know, addiction is by definition, the progressive loss of things once enjoyed. And when we're taking in sugary substances, the moment that we try to eat something that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Right. Well, and that's what herbal tea, you know, it's just the herbs. And I get people saying, oh, that's like drinking what like flavored water. It's yeah. so gross. Like, it's just like, you know, there's nothing to it. And even green tea. I mean, I love the grassy taste. Yes. That. But that's like an acquired developed taste because we're so accustomed to 
drinking things that have sugar. I mean, even milk mm-hmm. is sugary. We don't drink milk because of all the sugar in it. We um, juice, like we don't, even though that's natural, those are natural sugars. It's, it's just still it, it a short lot of circuits. The brain is what a it lot does. Of sugar. You know, we talked a little bit about this. Like as soon as we, we take the sugar into our body, the brain is getting this hit. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's why it's becoming increasingly more common. Like there was a day where, um, you know, kids would celebrate, uh, well, I mean, when we were kids, like celebrating Valentine's day, for mm-hmm. instance. Yeah. So like we, we've been reminiscing about this, but we would celebrate Valentine's day in school and you make your box and everyone would have cards. And sometimes if you were lucky, you might get a little heart, a little conversation heart, right? Yeah. Like a couple of them. Now it, they're like bags of Skittles, oh bags my of gosh. M&Ms. It's like candy bars, cookies, yeah. every like for Valentine's day. And it's, it's like, let's look beyond the card. Where's the candy? Yeah. They don't even care about the card. Are you kidding no. me? It's all about the candy. Yeah. And the same has become with uh, Easter, mm-hmm. with Christmas, with any, any holiday. I mean, and I used to love those Reese's um, shapes that come out oh, at the yeah, holidays. Yeah, and I'm the like, Christmas trees and the oh, pumpkins. pumpkins. The pumpkin was the best. Hearts at Valentine's, yep. Easter egg at Easter time. And I just remember like not being able to get enough. So let me that. ask you this. When did that shift for you? Okay. I love that you asked me that question because I didn't think I had a sugar problem. Mm-hmm. I didn't think that. And Wait, I didn't. why did you not think it was a problem? Because I just thought I eat healthy. Like I still, I eat salad and vegetables and I thought it was very normal and natural for people to eat sugar, you know, to eat um, cookies and chocolate and uh, every once in a while cake and brownies and bread and, Swig. you know, not to, re- not to mention the things that we don't associate as having sugar in them, like uh, crackers and bread Mm -hmm. and. Oh, graham crackers are like. Oh, I know. Satan incarnate. I know when I was a teenager, (laughs) when I was a teenager, I would eat like a box of graham crackers during finals. And like, I never had anyone to tell me otherwise, (laughs) like it wasn't good for me. But um, when I started the keto diet, which is low, very low carb. It's like 5% of your diet is carb. And really you're getting those carbs from vegetables. Yep. Um, and it's high fat and moderate protein. Really, I was like, oh my gosh, I am craving sugar. Mm-hmm. And not just sugar, but all processed food, like eliminating all of that from my, well, mostly all of it. Yeah. I'd say like we're probably... I don't know, 95% whole foods. Sure. And maybe we have like 5% snacks or processed food mm-hmm. or something like that. But like eliminating that, so many emotions came up. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to like throw things. I really you did, did throw things. Did I? Well, at one point in time, you, you remember <laughs> well, that one. Okay, so going back to when Grant <laughs> was in that program and we eliminated, uh, we did that elimination diet. He came home. <laughs> he came home from school one day, and I had been in the kitchen. I feel like it was all day long making like uh, whole grain granola bars with no sugar added. I mean, all this stuff. Just spending all my time making food for this child and for the family, which I was annoyed because the family was not compliant. No. <laughs> he came home not with from school with frosting all over his face, um, and I said, "What?" on your face and he's like uh i don't know i'm like what did you eat it was like red food coloring or he's something. like oh yeah it was so-and-so's birthday and we got donuts and i lost my mind yeah. i threw my spatula at the back window and i was like what is it all for you know it's just like oh my gosh i just wanted to run out the door screaming with my hair on fire <laughs> i was like how well, how do I keep sending my child to public school when it's always a holiday or someone's birthday oh, yeah. or they're celebrating it's Friday and we took our test, like any reason to yeah, give sugar. To these, sugar. Yeah. And the teachers are like, Oh, we have to reward with sugar. That's the only way we can get them to do anything. Mm-hmm. And I just am like, Oh my gosh, that's so fascinating because it really does have to be the child's choice. 
yeah. to not, I mean, we're not going to change the system. I would love to like have this podcast and everyone listens to it and they're like, oh, let's get rid of sugar. It's not good for us. And it takes but some time. I mean, look at Grant now though. Oh yeah. So Grant now, I mean, he's just, he's gone through puberty. He's developed into this man. He has his low voice and he's strong muscles. Concerned about his abs. Now he and... wants to work on his physical health. And yeah. we've also been training him how it's so related to his mental health yeah. too, with his ADHD. He's finally getting to this point where he's like, Hey, I need some protein. Hey, do we have any chicken? Where's hey, fruit? can I get a protein shake? This sort of thing. Mm-hmm. He's still not on board with vegetables. I've noticed. No, no, he hates them. We tried to feed him Brussels yeah. sprouts the other day. It's like, and... We'll give you more steak if you eat more Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I can't have more Brussels. I, there's no room. I was like, there's no room. Okay, well then there's more, no room for more steak. <laughs> so he ate his Brussels sprouts. Yeah, he, he he's. Oh. But it's amazing because like this has been a journey, and that's why I think that everyone needs to know is like. It's not an overnight fix. No, and don't is, give up. Yeah, I know. This has been years and years and years of us on this journey. Mm-hmm. And we're there. Yeah. And and that's also hard. I mean, because not all the time are couples there together. No. And there's been several times, like the elimination diet that we first did, that you were on board and I was on board. I wanted your help and your support. And then you are actually the one that started the keto diet yeah. first. Mm-hmm. And you kind of wanted help and support in that. And I'm just like, that's weird. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I did that I right after it. my mushroom trip three years yeah. ago. So and I, I felt like that's what I, it, it was interesting because in my mind and in my soul, that's what my body needed. I didn't know why I didn't know anything about the keto diet. Right. I started living that way. And lost 70 pounds. Yeah. And I had some help. Yeah. There's a lot of things I think went into that John 2.0 transformation mm-hmm. that you yeah. had at that time in your life. Um, getting rid of prescription drugs that we oh, talked yeah. about in episode mm-hmm. 18. Um, we didn't mention that you literally went on Facebook Live and threw all of those drugs <laughs> into the swimming pool. We you're should like, link I don't that for need- people. Yeah, we should, we should find it and link it. So you're like, literally, I don't need any of these anymore. I'm good. And you just started like, eating fat basically eating fat and drinking oil. I mean, yeah. Drinking like literally drinking olive oil and you got so many comments. People are like, wait, what are you doing? Yeah. Oil. Like, how do you, how do you do that? So then when I finally got on board with the keto diet, cause I'm like, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to live healthy. I don't feel like I'm doing my best. And the things I did before, you know, when I was in my twenties and thirties weren't working for me now in my forties. And I don't know what I need to like change something. I think the body loves homeostasis. It likes to stay the same. And so studying about that, I'm like, let's interrupt what's going on in my body and shift. So it becomes like the very definition of insanity, you know, where, where you try the same things over and over and they're not working, but you're still expecting this different result. Yeah. Or people would try it and it wouldn't last for like, a week or two weeks and they give up. Oh, yeah. that didn't work for me. Well, especially with the emotions that come along. Yes. With that. That's, that's the hardest thing I would say is we're all because of how much sugar we do eat. We are, we are emotional eaters. Yeah. Plain and said, you can't live in today's society and not be an emotional eater. It's well, unless you've done the work yeah, to, to train, work. retrain yourself. And so that's why the coaching program, because people are like, oh, you're like a diet coach. And I'm like, yes, like I'll teach you how to get on the keto diet that's really not what and, it's about. and what food to eat, yeah. because there's so many questions and, and curiosities about that. But it's more like, I'm going to help you manage your mind around food, around failure, around cravings, mm-hmm. around um, your body and, and the love that you have for yourself. And, and that if you truly do love your body and you want to live your best life, you're going to nourish it with those things. And then it becomes less difficult mm-hmm. to make those healthy food choices when you actually love yourself and you prioritize yourself and you, you care mm-hmm. about yourself, you're going to naturally want to put the things in your body that make you feel your best. At Peterson Family Coaching, we've developed a 16-week fat-to-fuel program that aims to improve both mental and physical health. This program is for you if you are over 40 and have a hard time losing weight, suffer from chronic inflammation, or simply want to add more happiness and better health to your life. 
On top of video trainings, you will work one-on-one with a coach to learn self-compassion, self-discipline, and how to manage your feelings. You will lose excess body weight, reduce symptoms of sickness, and potentially reduce or eliminate the need for prescription drugs. This program will transform your life so you never have to be where you are right now ever again. Click the link in the show notes or head over to fattofuel.com to get started today. Use the coupon code REVOLUTION to claim 10% off. So what does that look like? Like if I were to come to you and I, you know, I was like, I, I hate my body. And, and when I think about my body, I'm, I'm feeling a lot of shame. Yeah, it's interesting. So as long as you're telling yourself that you hate your body, I mean, we can hate ourselves thin. We can hate ourselves to fatness. Like you can hate yourself and lose a bunch of weight. But you're in, still in an gonna, unhealthy way. In, a, in an unhealthy way. You're still going to hate yourself at the end. Okay. You can hate yourself and gain a bunch of weight because you're telling yourself, I hate myself. I don't really care what I look like. And that's where I was going. That was my trajectory <laughs> is I was like, not necessarily that I hated myself, but I was, about just, I was just like, you know what? Who cares? I'm 40, whatever. I'm giving up. I throw in the towel. Nothing's working. And just went down this path of like, I'm, you know, I'm just, it is what it is. And I'm just not going to care because the only thing I tried before is to hate myself skinny. Mm -hmm. And so now I was like, okay, well, not that I consciously made this choice, but I'm like, I'm going to hate myself fat. Yeah. Yeah. And all that's what shame does. Shame makes us want to disengage with, with positive change. So like, you know, somebody comes to you and says, well, I hate myself. How do you turn them around and get them to the point to where they love themselves and they love their body? I mean, does that just yeah, happen overnight? Because they think, no, that's a great question because they think that I'm going to lose weight and then I'll love my body, but it's the opposite. It's like, let's love your body as you're losing the weight. Let's train yourself. You've got to start making small and simple changes. So like, I hate my body. Well, let's focus on like, what is working in your body? What do you appreciate about your body? How is your body working for so you right like, now? Like even, I mean, we, we, we call those like a bridge thought. Right. Right. Okay. So like the the bridge thought would be instead of saying, I hate my body and I just can't get to the point to where I can say, I love my body. Right. It's too far of a leap to go from, I hate my body to, I love my body. That's why like these, um, have you seen these positive affirmation cards or like quotes that (laughs) people put on their mirror and it's like, you are beautiful. You are loved. You are like, you can't believe that. Well, but I mean, maybe there's, there's some research that that's worked for people, but I think for the most part, like we have to find a thought about ourselves that we believe. Mm -hmm. So like, for me, it was like, there might be something out there that I haven't tried Mm -hmm. that will help me lose weight. So then that leads you to be curious. So I'm curious about, okay, what is this thing that John's doing? Is this might it work for me? I don't know. Like, let me think about it. Let me research it. And so mm-hmm. you just get curious about it. Or there's things like, okay, I hate my body, but I do love my eyes. Like mm-hmm. my eyes are so beautiful. I love my eyes. I've always loved my eyes. Now mm-hmm. you're looking at my eyes. You're like, they yeah, are, they, they are, are really, beautiful. they are really beautiful. Yeah. But that was just an example. But it's like, okay, how can I take the best care of my eyes? Do you know what my bridge thought was? What's up? I have a body. I have a body. That was mine to get started. I have a body. Yeah. And it's like, what does that mean that you have a body? Well, it's like, I'm a human. Yeah. I, I have responsibility for this body. Yeah. I, I love, there's so many. And so coming to coaching is like such a big part of this because it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. Like I have, um, you know, a friend who's like, I have um, a gallbladder issue. And so she just like focuses, like, I hate my gallbladder. I hate it. It's not working. Yeah. Like it's not functioning. And when it's not working, then I feel like crap. And it's just like, hate, 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 not to her whole body, but the gallbladder. And it's like that energy is running through your body, that hatred of this body. And part. that causes us to choose unhealthy foods and unhealthy lifestyle. It, it, it does. You can't feel hate and want to do good for yourself. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So um, processed food. I want to talk about that because yep. we talked a lot about sugar and we know it's addictive. I'm actually going to do a podcast just based on sugar and its addictive nature and mm-hmm. how to like detox from sugar. But talking about processed food as well, because 
there was a time where eating whole foods, oh, yeah. like, I mean, when I say whole foods, we're talking like uh, meat, fruit, vegetables, cheese, like. I had a dietitian tell me one time that if it can be grown, yeah, it's a whole food. So like, you know, you can grow a cow and have right. beef. You can grow a Brussels sprout. You can't grow a bread. Right. You can't even grow applesauce. You can't grow an applesauce. You yeah. can't grow an orange juice. Mm -hmm. And so that made it easier for me to actually choose whole foods. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you're not doing the keto diet, I mean, some sort of, so <laughs> this is the topic for today, right? Is that eating whole foods has become quote a diet. Like, oh, you're on a diet because yeah. you don't eat pizza, because you don't eat fast food, mm -hmm. because you don't eat bread. You're not going to eat cake on your birthday. Like, because it's such you're, a bad word, because you're on a diet and it's going to end someday. Right. right. Diets always end. Like I'm on a diet, diet. Diets are fads. You get that a lot too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how did we start adopting that word with uh, people that choose to eat whole foods? Like our daughter, it's her birthday today, the day of this recording. It's our 17 year old's 17 -year -old. birthday. And, um, you know, Kit, it's really interesting because she has really uh, talked a lot about her quote diet, mm -hmm. that she doesn't eat a lot of processed food yeah. and the carbs and the sugars that most kids eat. And so they've been like curious about this, like, okay, what are we supposed to give her or how do we celebrate with her? And it's very interesting. Like, time spent. That's they, her favorite she thing. She loves time. Her boyfriend spent time with her today and gave her all these cute notes. And then they went out to lunch because she still can go out Absolutely. to lunch. She went like, out to Boca, one of our favorite yeah, Mexican Boca places. Taqueria. She got a, a low carb plate, which is amazing. They have this like uh, machaca beef, mm -hmm. sour cream, avocado, cheese, and a ton of vegetables, yep. like a vegetable skewer and a lettuce, uh, lettuce cup. It comes with onions and it's peppers. It's delicious. And, mm -hmm. and it's low carb and filling. And, and with sour cream on the side. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned the sour cream. And guac. Yeah. And so she's coming out of there feeling amazing. Yeah. Like she resonates with that low carb platter so well. She's like, I don't feel bloated. I have energy. My head doesn't hurt. Like, and she, but you could go to that same restaurant yes, and just be bombed out with carbs. Yeah. Tamales, chips, and salsa. Feel like you need to roll out and go take a nap. <laughs> yeah. But the Mexican siesta, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no wonder that's the thing. But it's possible for teenagers and possible for us as adults. It's just like making those small habit changes. You know? Yeah. It's a habit changes, but it's like intentional eating. Just think about like every time you put food into your body. It's, it's fuel. I mean, that's, I talked to Grant about this. All right. So just the other day I had the conversation with him of, of try not to eat foods that are feeding your feelings Oh yeah. The, these are foods that are meant to fuel your body. It's so hard to do yeah. because we're trained the opposite. Mm -hmm. We're like, what am I in the mood for? Yes, right? Totally. Don't we what hear that a lot? What, what am, am I in the mood, mood for? for? Instead of like really slowing down and thinking, what does my body need yeah. right now? Like mm -hmm. what energy do I need to put in my body? So like for him, he's, he works out probably like what, 15 hours a oh week. Gosh, it's a yeah. lot right now. Well, the dude's running cross every single day. So he gets three miles in every day. And then every other day he's swimming. And then the meets are on the weekend. So yeah. that's like cross and swim on the weekends. Plus he's doing uh, his own workouts, like abs and squats. Yeah, and he comes up from last night. He's like, dad, I did 50 pushups and I did a hundred squats and a hundred sit ups. hundred sit ups. And I'm like, dude, you're stinky again. Go take a shower. <laughs> but then he's, he knows he's like trained it after that. He's trying to fuel up on protein yep. because he's trying to regain or build up those muscles. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, before we send him off to school, we're trying to fuel him with fat because that is going to help extend his energy and fuel his brain. I mean, you think about what those kids are doing when they yeah. go off to school, they're expected to concentrate eight hours a day. Oh, the sugar e epidemic has drastically changed the whole realm of ADHD. Yeah. Because, you know, our brains that burns through sugar so quickly and a stressed out brain manifests in ADHD symptoms. And so, yeah, for him, yeah, definitely. We feed him fat in the morning so he has a nice, slow energy source to burn. 
throughout the day and keep his brain from that stressful feeling. And that's why like the name of a program that we have is fat to fuel because we're using not just the fat on our body, but the fat that we're eating to fuel our body and our mind. Mm -hmm. And just like, it's such the opposite of what we've been trained yeah. to do as a society. We've been like, oh no, you need low fat and, well, and uh, I think corporations largely drive that because carbs are cheap to make. And, and charges are cheap to process. Well, yeah, you can feed the masses. I mean, like getting back to like the fast food, yeah. like that's so much easier to feed the masses quickly, efficiently, and affordably mm -hmm. with a lot of carbs and takes a lot longer to create a salad or create, you know, something that doesn't have all those fillers in it. it also takes a lot more money, yep. which not everyone's willing to pay for something that's healthier. Although we can, the oh interesting my gosh, thing, that doesn't even get into it. That's a thought error. Right I know there. the interesting thing is because I have a client that was like, Oh, I can't afford. She, she started the program. And she's like, I can't afford to eat keto. And I was like, that's so interesting because it's actually more affordable to cut out the fast food, the mm -hmm. processed food, the snacks, yeah, major and cost more savings. affordable to just eat fat and moderate protein. You could save a ton of money every month. What I'm talking about is like, if you go get fast food, that like that would cost more, I think, essentially. Oh my gosh, one sandwich now to go to Jimmy John's is like 15 bucks. Yeah. And, and like if you were just, if you're going to feed someone something like nutritious and healthy, that's going to just take more time and money because like the process, yeah. the highly processed food isn't there. You're going to want like whole natural food. Yep. Also, people don't want that. Like when no. they go get fast food, they want that quick fix. They want the, it's the, what are you in the mood for? Yeah. They want the rush. They want the ease. They want that quickness yeah. of the food. So also it goes quickly through your body too. Oh my gosh. Well, that's what they want though. Yeah. As soon as it's gone, then they can sell you something else. Well, and think about this, like if Grant goes to like Taco Bell, he could probably down like a dozen tacos mm -hmm. versus the tacos we make at home, which are more like whole food based tacos, and lots of fat in them, lots too. of fat, good vegetables, uh, stuffed full of, you know, good we're lucky meats. to have them eat three of those. Yeah. I was, I was going to say two max. Yeah. And then it's like the same amount of calories, but he's getting much better fuel yeah. by eating what we make at home. It just takes like a little bit more, uh, focus. I think yeah. people shy away from like, Oh, I don't have time. That's another, yeah. uh, that's another thought error that they have. Like, I don't have yeah. time to cook all the food. Oh my gosh. I, what the other day, remember last week I put in two Chuck roasts in the crock pot yep. with uh Lipton onion soup seasoning. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know what this is for. I'm just going to make it so that we have it. I had to do nothing. No. Okay. I just had to remember to put it in the crock pot, yep. but we had, uh, like everybody bombarded us. Like, Oh my gosh, we had like over. 10 extra people at our house that night. And I was just cranking out like all sorts of stuff, just using that uh, machaca beef that we had. And it was so good. And they all oh. left filled and happy. And I was like, so glad that I was prepared. So when you're talking about time savings, easy. Yep. That was easy. Money savings, uh, way more affordable than being like, oh, let's buy everybody pizza, which would have been a hundred dollars, or let's buy, you know, whatever chicken nuggets or eat any anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like this was a cheaper, better option. So well, and you know, another thing you can look at is how it does make you feel. I mean, if you're feeling good, you can do more work. Exactly. Oh my gosh, yes, exactly. It's like an energy savings because if you just take re redistribute your energy, right? Mm -hmm. Like distribute your energy into your food yeah. and you will get that energy back from eating the healthy food. It's just like episode 18. We're talking about you worked and worked and worked and you thought this is going to make more money for me. But then when you scaled back from work and saved that energy and redistributed it in different ways, you were able to like lose weight and live a healthier life mm -hmm. and have healthier habits. So interesting that way. Okay. So to wrap it up, what's some golden nugget of wisdom for our listeners today? Oh my gosh. Um, I would say celebrate your successes and don't beat yourself up for your failures. 
that's great. I think that's very common practice for people that want to change their eating habits that we do think, you know what, I failed. So what's the point? Yeah. I remember thinking that I was trying to lose weight and start the keto diet and uh, Josie made a whole batch of, oh, I forget. It was like something delicious, like s'mores brownies or scotcheroos or one of those things. It's yeah. like, once I start eating it, I can't, can't stop. stop. <laughs> and I ate like, I ate a, ba- a bite and then another slice. And pretty soon I ate like half a tray mm-hmm. because I was like, what's the point? I already messed everything up. Yeah. What's the point? I've already. Yep. Shame know, monster is strong. Yeah. And so just like. Uh, breaking through those like brain barriers that we have to really love ourselves and uh, get rid of the shame and the guilt we have around what we've eaten. And then I think for, for my why, like why do I want to share this message with everybody is because I have loved how this has changed my life. Like truly in a way I never thought possible. Like, more energy, being able to play with my kids more, more uh, mental clarity, being able to build this program. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I would not have been able to build this program or go through my coaching and read as much as I do and all those things like without having a healthy brain. No, no, you're right. And and when when you eliminate processed food and sugar, your brain is healthier. Yeah, it's it is very interesting how you when you're changing your fuel, like your your life automatically changes. And and you know, it's I think it's important not to expect changes, expect what to what you want to have happen, but just be present and observe it. Yeah. That's so good. Uh remember you guys small intentional changes will add up over time. I love your program. I, I, I you yeah. know, this, this, this fat to fuel program. Thank you. I mean, it, <laughs> it you're, is, it's your program too. You're a big part of it. Yes. Yes. But you did all the legwork to actually put it together into something that's organized and useful to follow. Oh, thank you. And so we have that, but then, you know, on top of that, you know, one of the things we did want to mention is I'm going to put this, uh, this new CBD oil packaging on here. That's one, another tool that we actually utilize in our program. Yeah to help us out. Uh, so it does a couple of things. I mean, it does actually reduce the cravings to where you can actually start making positive steps forward. It's not a fix all, but it's just another one of those tools that you can use to kind of get over that hump of the the sugar yeah. addiction and into a healthier lifestyle. I remember when you were losing weight, people were like, what are you doing? And they're like, Oh, CBD oil. I'm like, Oh my gosh, John. Like, that's just such a quick answer. They're like, Oh, I'm going to get my hands on some of that CBD oil and I'm going to lose bunch of weight, like what John did. And it's like, actually that it was a help, but it wasn't the whole, the whole thing. No, this is not doing the work. This right. is getting something to help. Yeah. It reduces cravings. It reduces your blood. Sugar it lowers level. your blood sugar yeah. to where you can actually start losing weight faster. Yeah. So, yeah. And it helps you sleep, which will help you lose weight as Amen. well. Yeah. It takes off a little anxiety, which so. Having too much cortisol <laughs> will make you gain weight, make yep, you hold yep. on. So to it does weight. a whole bunch of things. Yeah. So. so we're happy to share that with you. Um, there's a link in the show notes, or you can go to petersonfamilycoaching.com to order yours, or just get a hold of us, and we're happy to set you up with that. You guys, your health is important. Everything you do counts. It all matters, and you matter. When you develop healthy habits you will show up as a different person in the world. You will be a better spouse, a better coworker, a better parent and friend because you've taken those steps to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you'll feel better in your, in your body, but also in your mind and your spirit. You bet. Okay. You guys take care. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you found value in what you heard today. If so, please follow us and go give us that five-star rating. It really helps us reach more people that need to hear this message. Also, if you're ready to make changes to your health and well-being, go check out our Fat to Fuel program. Our coaching program empowers you to make healthy changes to your life one step at a time. Go to fattofuel.com or click the link in the show notes. We hope to see you there.